everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm here today with another video about the Chinese drama, The Untamed. Today, I'm talking about all the ways that the show hinted at a romantic relationship between Lan Zhan and Wei Ying. If you're new to the drama, I have another video reviewing the drama and telling you why I loved it and why you should definitely check it out. You can watch episodes of The Untamed on Netflix and also right here on YouTube. So what's one thing Asian dramas are great at? Subtle, slow burn romances. Asian dramas are masters in the art of delayed gratification. It's not like The Witcher where Geralt and Yennefer are going at it like rabbits by the end of their first encounter. It's more like after 40 episodes of build up, the hands finally touch and somehow you're more excited than if they had actually jumped into bed together. That is the power of the slow burn. But given Chinese censorship, the show had to be super careful about showing anything romantic between Wei Ying and Lan Zhen. But luckily, the production team had a vast pool of industry knowledge of slow burn romances to draw on. It's also helpful that in the novel itself, the two guys don't get together until towards the end. So the novel provided a lot of interesting build-up material that the TV show adapted. Once you start paying attention, you'll see that the production team managed to sneak in a lot of signs that Wei Ying and Lan Zhen were more than just good friends. The first major hint is all of the times that Wei Ying touches Lan Zhen's headband. The first time this happens is in episode 6, um, right after Lan Zhen gets drunk. Lan Zhen is like half passed out and lying in bed and Wei Ying goes over and asks him to call him Wei Ge Ge, which translates into older brother Wei. This is pretty suggestive because calling someone Ge Ge in Chinese sometimes has romantic or even sexual connotations. Wei Ying goes to fix his headband because it's crooked and Lan Zhen slaps his hand away and says something like, this headband is sacred, no one but parents and significant others can touch it. Now think about the scene later in the same episode when Lan Zhen and Wei Ying end up in the Cold Spring Ice Cave. There's a spell in there that targets everyone but spares members of the Lan Clan. Wei Ying realizes that it's the headband that signifies that you're of the Lan Clan. So Lan Zhen takes off his headband and wraps it around both his wrist and Wei Ying's wrist. Not only has Lan Zhen given something to Wei Ying that he's not supposed to give to anyone other than his life partner, he's using it to bind them together. This gesture is suggestive of the Chinese tradition of having the bride and the groom each hold an end of a red sash during the wedding ceremony. The next scene that I wanted to talk about, which hints majorly at something romantic between Lan Zhen and Wei Ying, is the exchange they have in the tortoise cave. So the tortoise cave scene in episode 13 is probably one of my favorite scenes in the whole show. This is the premise. Lan Zhen and Wei Ying are hiding in a cave from a monstrous tortoise. Um, Lan Zhen's leg is injured and he can't move. Wei Ying has also suffered a burn to his chest, which he got when saving a girl called Mian Mian from being branded by burning metal. Lan Zhen tells him that he shouldn't be so impulsive next time. And Wei Ying starts bragging about how it was all worth it to save a pretty girl and that she'll remember him for the rest of her life. This is Lan Zhen's reaction. You know, he will forget you for a long time. Why are you so angry? If you have anything to say, don't forget to forget anyone. My brother is not you. Unless... Unless... 除非蓝湛, I mean, come on, come on. Clearly Lan Zhen is frustrated at his feelings for Wei Ying. He thinks Wei Ying is just going around toying with everybody. The next big hint that I wanted to talk about relates to the song Wang Xian. So later on in the same tortoise cave, Wei Ying is injured and weakened because he's just extracted the sword from underneath the tortoise shell. He asks Lan Zhen to sing a song for him and Lan Zhen hums one very quietly. After Lan Zhen finishes humming, Wei Ying asks him what the song is called, and from Wei Ying's hazy perspective right before he drifts off, we see Lan Zhen mouthing two words. It turns out these two words are Wang Xian, which is a combination of their names, Lan Wang Ji and Wei Wu Xian. How do I know this? There's a behind the scenes video on YouTube where the director tells Wang Yibo to say Wang Xian. Wang Xian is basically their shift name, and that's what Lan Zhen calls the song that he wrote for Wei Ying. 
This song is also how Lan Zhang recognizes Wei Ying after his resurrection. Now, remember, we're all supposed to buy into the idea that when Wei Ying is wearing his metal mask, people are supposed to think that he's Mo Xuan Yu. He looks exactly the same as Wei Ying, so this is definitely a bit of a stretch, but we need to just run with it. The reason Lan Chen figures out before anyone else that Mo Xuan Yu is Wei Ying is because Wei Ying plays the same song from the cave. The next category of hints is that Lan Zhan and Wei Ying actually do things together that resemble Chinese marriage ceremony rituals. I mentioned earlier that the headband resembled the red marital sash. In episode 36, Wei Ying and Lan Zhan return to Wei Ying's home, Lotus Pier. They go to the Jiang Ancestor Shrine, and together they bow to Wei Ying's adoptive parents. What's key here is that they bow together three times. In ancient China, a marriage ceremony involved the couple bowing together three times, once to the heavens and the earth, once to the ancestors, and once to your parents. I don't think it's a coincidence at all that they also bow three times here. What's more, in episode 36, in another one of my favorite scenes, Lan Zhan is drunk again, and he sneaks into someone's backyard, steals a pair of roosters, and hands them to Wei Ying and proudly asks, are they fat enough? In certain parts of China, it used to be the custom for the groom to give live chickens to the bride's family as a gift in connection with marriage. And lastly, I want to talk about the ending. Now, I know a lot of fans were disappointed or confused with the ending because it didn't clearly show Wei Ying and Lan Zhen ending up together. Now, I am here to convince you that they most definitely ended up together. So, let's see. What happens at the end? Lan Zhen and Wei Ying go their separate ways on a mountaintop near cloud recesses. Then, Wei Ying is seen playing the flute on a cliffside near cloud recesses. show ends. We don't get to see Lan Zhan. Did he come back? Was it just all in Wei Ying's head? After watching the scene many times and doing some research, I figured out that this is what happens. The scene where Wei Ying plays the flute on a cliffside takes place a certain amount of time after they part ways. Do you want proof? Wei Ying is wearing a different outfit. This means a certain amount of time has passed, Wei Ying is done with his wanderings, and he has come back to cloud recesses to be with Lan Zhan. Also, what do they say to each other right before they parted ways? Wei Ying said, Next time we meet again, you better have a name for the song. And Lan Zhan says, I thought of a name a long time ago. Why did the show choose to depict this exchange right before the end? It's hinting that after they reunite, Lan Zhan will tell Wei Ying the name. Remember, the name is Wang Xian, their ship name. Once Lan Zhan tells Wei Ying the name, it will be clear to Wei Ying that Lan Zhan has had feelings for him this entire time. And they'll probably, you know, hook up. So there you have it. These are some of the ways that the show hinted at a romantic relationship between Lan Zhan and Wei Ying. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I would love to hear whether you picked up on a romantic relationship in the comments below. I'll be posting one video a week about Chinese dramas uploaded every Sunday evening. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. See you all next time.